everyone and welcome to a new video of Proud Muslima with Yara Ismail. As we all know, today is Ramadan, so Ramadan Kareem to everyone. I hope today was an easy day for you all. I know that like fasting today is probably kind of hard since we're not really used to fasting because we haven't fasted in a long time. But I hope it was fun for everyone. If you haven't seen my Ramadan trailer, starting today and every week of Ramadan, I'm going to be sharing with you guys stories that have to do with um, the way or um, stories about like how certain women in our modern day society decided to wear the hijab. And I was really fascinated about some stories and this is why I decided to make this. And other stories are going to be about some, they're gonna be kind of like success stories about women who do wear the hijab. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a story about an Egyptian actress who was once an Egyptian actress. Her name is Hanan Turk. And um, she did not wear the hijab. And she just wasn't, she didn't feel really sure of herself. She didn't know if what she was doing was right or wrong. So she decided to go to a sheikh or a scholar to ask him if not wearing the hijab is halal. And so she went to the sheikh and she asked, or the scholar, and she asked him. She said, is wearing the hijab levels of heaven or is it heaven or fire? And what she meant by this is does if she not if she doesn't wear the hijab does that mean that she's not going to heaven and she's going to fire or if she does wear the hijab does it just mean that she's going to be in a higher level in heaven and she said if it's just going to put me in a higher level in heaven then it's okay i don't have to wear the hijab and i'm okay with being in a lower level or a lower level and at that time she wasn't really close with with god or with allah so she she wasn't really like kind of focused so she said if it just means levels of heaven then I'm okay with being in a lower level. And so the scholar kind of laughed and he asked her, oh, did you convert to Islam or was Islam passed on to you by your parents? So were you born a Muslim? And she was like, yes, I was born a Muslim. And then he was like, great. That means that you own a piece of land on this earth. And she was like, what? I own a piece of land? She's like, yes, you own a piece of land on this earth. And she was like, okay, great. And so the scholar asked her, do you believe in the five pillars of Islam? And she said, yes, of course, I believe in the five pillars of Islam. And so he said, great. I want you to plant these five pillars, like pillars, actual pillars. I want you to plant them in your piece of land. And so she was like, okay, I planted them in my land. Now what? And he was like, now live. Just live. And she was like, what, what, do you mean, what do you mean live? How do I live like this with some, a pile of dirt and some pillars? Do you expect me to live? And he was like, what do you want? She said, I want, I want a house, I want walls, I want a roof, I want a backyard, I want a lot of stuff. And he was like, okay, then you have to believe in the parts of Iman, the parts of Iman. And so she was like, okay. So the, the scholar asked her, do you believe in Allah? She was like, of course, of course I believe in Allah. Do you believe in the angels? Of course. Do you believe in the books of Allah? And she said, of course, of course I believe in the books of Allah. So he said, great. Now open the Qur'an, one of the books of Allah. Open the Qur'an. And she opened the Qur'an and the scholar told her, open to Surat Al-Nur. Go to Surat Al-Nur. So she opened to Surat Al-Nur and uh, the scholar told her, okay, start reading. And so she said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah anzalnaha wa faradnaha. Surah anzalnaha wa faradnaha. And so the scholar asked her, she, he said, what does that mean? So what does this ayah mean? And he, she said, this means, this ayah tells us that this surah, in the Qur'an, it tells us that the surah is mandatory. So, and after she said this, she was like, wait, 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 wait. If Allah says that this surah in specific is mandatory, doesn't that mean that the rest of the surahs in the Qur'an aren't mandatory? Because if Allah wanted to, he could have just said that for every surah. And so the scholar laughed and he was like, no, 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 no. Allah specifically said this in this surah because it's kind of like a, a study guide study guide for your test and there's a certain chapter in your study guide and the teacher tells you to highlight this chapter highlight it a dozen times and make sure that you read every single word in this chapter because it is super important it's super important that's what Allah is trying to tell us he's trying to tell us to, to look this this surah is important why is it important because the Quran is kind of like our catalog okay Surat An-Nur, in specific, is kind of like that, that first page in your catalog that tells you that like this symbol means so-and-so, and this word means so-and-so, and this means so-and-so. That's what this part, this what that's what this surah is trying to tell us. And so, 
uh, this taller told her, okay, read this ayah. It was the, the ayah that explains that wearing the hijab is mandatory for women. And so she read the ayah, and she was like, wait, wait, wait. Allah did not use the word hijab at all, nor did he explain anything about covering our heads. So that means that I don't have to wear the hijab, and you guys are just, like, speaking nonsense. I don't have to wear the hijab. And he was like, no, nope. Because Allah uses, instead of using the word hijab, Allah uses the word khimar, khimar, which is an Arabic word. And so, and that's why the Hanan, the actress, she was like, she thought that this word doesn't mean anything and that if Allah wanted to put hijab or wanted to put coverage of the head, he could. But the scholar said no. He opened an Arabic dictionary and they read and the word khamr meant, specifically meant the coverage of the brain. The word khamr meant the coverage of the brain. So the scholar asked her, he was like, Hanan, where is your brain? Is it in your ankle? Is it on your knee? Is it in your hand? Where is your brain? She was like, my brain is in my head. So he was like, okay, if your brain is in your head, then when Allah uses the word khimar, where, what is he trying, what does he designate us to? And so she said, my head. So khimar means the coverage of your head. And that's kind of the explanation of that ayah. And that was the end of her story. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood the points of the story. And what I was trying to tell you guys is that the hijab is not, is the hijab is a very important part of our lives. Because when the story started and um, the scholar told Hanan that if you believe in the pillars of Islam and that none of the pillars of Islam say to wear the hijab, but if you believe in the pillars of Islam and you would just, are you, you're able to live like that with some pillars and some dirt, okay, go ahead. But that's not a life. It's not a good life. It's not a successful life. It's just not a life. And so when she said she wanted a life, he told her, then you have to believe in the parts of Iman. And one of the parts of Iman is believing in the books of Allah. And the, one of the books of Allah is the Quran. And Surah An-Nur in the Quran tells us to wear the hijab. Therefore, if you want a good life, you have to believe in the pillars. You have to believe in the parts of Iman which one of them is the Qur'an, and in the Qur'an, it tells us to wear the hijab. So, in the end, I want to tell you guys that a successful and a happy and a great life, to complete that all, you need to have the hijab in this. And I'm trying to tell this to everyone who is not a hijabi, because really, you won't understand how great the hijab will be, and what massiveness, <laughs> that's not even a word, the, the greatness it will do to your life. I'm trying to tell you guys this. And I really do appreciate every single woman who wakes up and puts this on her head and it doesn't really i mean i just want to tell you guys that it doesn't make you look ugly and it doesn't make you look scary and it's just it's a blessing like it's really a blessing that ends my video and i hope you all liked it and you learned a lot from it and please stay tuned for my next my next video next week in ramadan